Hey guys, in this video we are going to go over monomial square roots. And to start off, we're going to really quick go back to talking about what a monomial is. A monomial is a number by itself, a variable by itself, or the product of numbers and variables. So a number by itself, variables by itself, or product of numbers and variables. That's what a monomial is. And what we're going to be doing today in this video is dealing with monomials underneath a square root sign, also known as square roots with variables inside of them. So square roots with variables are also known as monomial square roots. And just like numbers, those variables can be simplified. So we were spending some time simplifying square roots like the square root of 24, where we were breaking it down by a divisible perfect squared number so 24 is divisible by the perfect squared number 4. And then we were taking that product of the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. We were breaking it down into 2 square root of 6. And that's how we simplified the square root. Now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the square root again, but this time we're going to add some letters in the mix. So let's talk really quick about those letters. Remember that when a variable multiplies to another to itself, that's the same as, let's say, m squared. So m times m is m squared, which means that the square root of m squared is m. And that's because m times m equals m squared. Now check this out. Let's say m to the third times m to the third. That is m to the sixth power. So the square root of m to the sixth power is m to the third because m to the third times m to the third equals m to the sixth. And there's a little bit of a, a relationship here. Notice how this one's exponent, here we have the square root of m squared and the resulting exponent is m to the first. Here we have the square root of m to the sixth and the resulting exponent is three. So if you didn't notice, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Let's see if we can do that again and see if you notice a pattern. Let's try m to the 4th times m to the 4th, that's m to the 8th power. Let's take the square root of m to the 8th power, that's equal to m to the 4th, because m to the fourth times m to the fourth is m to the eighth. Is that the same as, did our exponent come out to be the same as eight divided by two? Did our exponent answer, is eight divided by two? It is. Because since we had to add the exponents to get the final answer, when you take the square root, you're basically splitting these guys in half because you're looking for same times same, and in order for same times same to be true, these had to be exactly the same exponent. To kind of narrate that down into a rule, oh, let's move that out of the way. If m is a multiple of two, in this case we've got the square root of a to the m, and m is the exponent. If the exponent is a multiple of two, we're gonna use the rule at the square root of a to the m is a, and then you simply take m, the exponent, and cut it in half. And then you can always test it. So for example, the square root of x to the 10th power should be x to the 5th power. Let's test it. Is x to the 5th times x to the 5th equal to x to the 10? Well, keep the base, add the exponents, yes. So it's the same as taking this exponent, so the square root of x to the 10th is the same as going x to the 10th and then divide 10 by 2, so x to the 5th. And again, you can test it, x to the 5th times x to the 5th equals x to the 10th. Let's try some that are multiples of 2 and then we'll talk about what if it's not a multiple of 2. So let's see. Here we've got the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is simply x. And that's because x times x equals x squared. Notice how this is 2 divided by 2, sorry, not 1. 
This is 2 divided by 2, which is x to the first power, or just x. Now let's look at the next example. We've got the square root of m to the sixth power. That's m to the third power, so you should be thinking 6 divided by 2. Let's test it to see if that's true. Let's test m to the third times m to the third. Does that make m to the sixth? Yes, it does. For example three, we've got the square root of 9k squared. We're going to split that up into the square root of 9 and times the square root of k squared. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of k squared is k. So that simplifies to 3k. Let's test that. Does 3k times 3k equal 9k squared? Yes, it does. So we've got the square root of 64p to the fourth, so let's split it up into the square root of 64 times the square root of p to the fourth. The square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of p to the fourth is p squared, because p squared times p squared equals p to the fourth power. You could also be thinking here 4 divided by 2 to get your final um, exponent. You can also test that final answer. Does 8p squared times 8p squared equal 64p to the fourth? Yes, it does. So go ahead and try 5 and 6. Pause the video and try those now, and then I'll give you some answers. Hopefully you did pause the video and tried it on your own. The answer to number 5 would be 10xy. That's the square root of 100x squared y squared. And number 6. The square root of 49a squared b to the 6th c to the 4th would be 7a b to the 3rd c squared. a times a, a squared, b to the 3rd times b to the 3rd, b to the 6th, c squared times c squared, c to the 4th. So what about if I have an odd valued exponent? Because if it's even, we are just splitting it in half. But what if we have an odd valued exponent? Because we know that odd numbers don't split evenly in half. That's why they're odd. So let's say we have something like the square root of x to the fifth power. We will do like we did with non-simplifiable radicals and we're going to split it up. And here's how you split it up. You always split it up into the closest even number, so you go down a number, followed by one left over. So since it's x to the fifth, the even number right below 5 is 4. So we rewrite x to the fifth as x to the fourth times x to the first. So we rewrite as the even number right below it times a power of one. That's always true because you're gonna have an even number times the odd, the odd exponent, even numbered exponent, sorry, times the odd numbered exponent of one will make five. So x to the fourth times x to the first is x to the fifth power. Then we split them up and we can fix the even number one, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared, square root of x. And that's how you would simplify an odd numbered exponent. Let's try another one. Let's say you've got the square root of x to the ninth. So eight is the even number right below nine. So we rewrite this as x to the eight times x to the first. And it's always x to the first because you know, if you go down one, then you only have one left to make uh, this number. So 8 plus 1 is 9. And then we split them up. And we can take the square root of the even. So the square root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th power. So you really got to know the even ones. It's just dividing the exponent by 2. So x to the 4th square root of x. So let's take that knowledge over here to number 7, the square root of y to the 5th. That is an odd exponent, so we're going to rewrite this as y to the 4th times y. So we're going to rewrite it as the even and then the first power left over. So we've got y to the 4th times y. That makes y to the 5th. It's under the square root. We split them up, the square root of y to the 4th times the square root of y. And we clean up the even one. The square root of y to the 4th is y to the second square root of y left over. And there is the simplified version of square root of y to the fifth. In this example, 
We're gonna go ahead and start with splitting up since we have two um, bases. So we're gonna split up square root of a squared and square root of b to the third. This is an even exponent, so the square root of a squared is simply a. And now for this odd exponent, we're gonna do a little work. So we're gonna rewrite b to the third as b to the second times b to the first, down one, and then the one left over. We're going to just keep a traveling with us. We're gonna split them up and keep a traveling with us. The square root of b squared is b with the square root of b left over. So simplified is ab square root of b. So I'd like you to give I'd like you to give number nine a try. If you could pause the video now and try number nine, give it your best shot, and then I'll go over number nine as the last example for monomial square roots introduction. Pause the video now. So the answer to let me move this to a little bit. All right, the answer to number nine is x y z squared square root of y. This is the exponent of the z here, not an index. Okay, so x y z squared square root of y, and let me tell you why. The square root of x squared, I went ahead and um, split them up, okay, into their three roots, since they are three different bases. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of y to the third, we need to split up and do a little work on because the three is odd. And the square root of z to the fourth is z to the second power, to the second power, there we go. Because four divided by two is two, and z squared times z squared makes z to the fourth. So we're gonna clean up right here. I'm just gonna keep bringing these down. So we'll split these up into the square root of y squared times the square root of y. And one more time, x times the square root of y squared, which is y, times the square root of y, times z squared. And the only thing stylistically is that we just need to move this to the back and put all our non-radicals uh, in the front. So x, y, z to the second, square root of y. So that is our introduction to monomial square roots. Thank you for watching and signing out.